Now at the beginning of the staff, you'll see a symbol. This is called a clef. There are two main types of clef, treble clef and bass clef. Treble clef is for your right hand if you're a piano player. This is used for the high notes, anything above middle C. And this is usually where the melody goes. Bass clef is for your left hand if you're a piano player. This is used for the low notes, anything below middle C. And this is usually where the chords and the bass notes are written. So let's look at treble clef first. Each note can be written on a line or on a space. Now the bottom line of the treble clef is E. And this isn't just any E, it's specifically the E that's above middle C. So middle C is here, this is D, and this is E. Now when we go up from E to the space that's above it, the note goes up from E to F, and then again from F to G, and G to A, and A to B, and B to C, and C to D, and D to E, all the way to F, which is the top line. So if you only knew that the bottom line is E, you could actually figure out any note in the treble clef. Just count up from E. Now you can remember the lines of the treble clef with the following sentence. Every good boy deserves food. And it's true. So to quickly identify a note that's on a line, just count up every good boy deserves food and the first letter of that word will tell you what the note is. So let's try this out. Can you tell me which note this is? Well, we'll just say it out loud. Every good boy. Boy is for B, so this is B. Or let's say you saw this note. Can you tell me which note this is? Well, again, let's count up the lines. Every good boy deserves food. Food is for F, so this is an F. And one more, can you tell me which note this is? Well, this note is actually on a space, and every good boy deserves food is only for the lines. However, we can still count up the lines, every good boy, and then we can count up one more note from B, and that tells us that this would be C. So every good boy deserves food tells you the lines, but you can also figure out the spaces as well. Now there's a second way which we can identify notes in the spaces. The four spaces of the treble clef are F, A, C, E, and that spells face. So we can spell the word face to quickly figure out the spaces of the treble clef. So let's put this to the test. Can you tell me which note this is? Well, let's count up the spaces and spell the word face. So F, A, C. This is the C that's one octave above middle C. Now, if the composer wants to write a note that's higher than the top line, we can use what's known as ledger lines to write notes that go above the staff or below the staff. And with ledger lines, you just have to count up from the top note of the staff. For example, if you see this note, well, we would just count up to the top line, which we know is F, because every good boy deserves food. And then you can count up from F, so G, A, B, and C. And this C is two octaves above middle C. Or we can do the same thing going down. So can you tell me which note this is? Well, we know that the bottom line is E, because every good boy. And then we'll count down from E, so E, D, C, and this note must be B. That's the B that's just below middle C. And if you're playing a piece of music that has a lot of ledger lines, it can be helpful to pencil in the note names to your sheet music. Now let's talk about sharps and flats, which are generally the black notes on the piano. Now when you see this symbol written before a note, this is a sharp, and it means to raise the note by a half step. So if we take a D and we want to sharpen it, then this is D sharp. If this note is F, then this would be F sharp. If we take a G and then we sharpen it, this is G sharp. Or if we take an A and then we sharpen it, this is A sharp. And on rare occasions, you might see a B sharp, which would be C, or an E sharp, which would be F. So in every instance, sharp means to just raise the note by a half step. Most of the time though, you'll be playing a black note. So let's say you saw this note. Can you tell me which note this is? Well, first we count up the spaces, F, A, C, 
and then we sharpen the note and we play C sharp. Now other times you'll see this symbol before a note and this is a flat sign and it looks like a lowercase b. Now this means to lower the note by a half step. So it's the opposite of a sharp sign. So let's say you saw this in the stave. Can you figure out which note this is? Well first let's count up the lines. Every good boy deserves. So this is D and then we'll flatten the note and we'll play D flat. And we can flatten any note. So if this is E, then E flat will be this. And if this is G, then this will be G flat. And if this note is A, then this is A flat. And if this note is B, then this will be B flat. And on rare occasions, you could see a C flat, which would be this. Yes, B natural is the same note as C flat. And on rare occasions, you could see an F flat, which would be E. But most of the time, flats are the black notes on the piano. Now when you see a sharp or a flat in the music, it stays in effect for the rest of the bar. So if we had an E flat at the beginning of the bar, then any E's later in the bar should also be played as E flat. And you won't see the flat sign repeated. But when the music goes to the next bar and it crosses the bar line, then the flat or the sharp is removed and the music goes back to normal. So if there was an E in the following bar, then this would go back to being an E natural. Now normally when you encounter a sharp or a flat, it won't just be a one-off. In fact, the composer will probably want every B in the music to be a B flat, for example. So instead of writing every single B with a flat sign, it's common to use a key signature, which is a display of sharps or flats at the beginning of the song. And the key signature tells you which notes to play as flats or as sharps. And that way the composer doesn't have to write any more sharps or any more flats into the music. Now it's very important that you look at the key signature first before you start sight reading a new piece of music. Otherwise you'll learn the whole piece of music wrong. If there's an F sharp, then say to yourself, okay, every F is going to be an F sharp. Or if it says B flat, say to yourself, okay, every B is going to be a B flat. You have to remember it because there'll be no reminders in the sheet music. Now the key signature will stick to all sharps or all flats. And you won't see a combination of sharps and flats in the key signature. And a key signature can be as complicated as five or six or even seven sharps or seven flats which is a great way to stop anyone from ever playing your music. So let's put your knowledge to the test. Can you tell me which two notes are in this key signature? And with sharps, you just look at the very middle of the sharp sign. Is it on a line or is it on a space? Well, let's count up the lines. Every good boy deserves food. That's F sharp. And then let's spell face. So F A C and that's C sharp. And that means that every F and every C should be played with a sharp. And one more key signature. Can you tell me which two flats are in this piece? Well, let's count up the lines. Every good boy, that's B flat. And then we have the top space, which spells face. So F A C E and that's E flat. So that means that every B and every E in this piece of music should be played as a flat. And there won't be any flat signs in front of the notes to remind you. You just have to remember B flat and E flat throughout the song. Now what if a composer wants to remove a sharp or a flat? Well, in that case, they'll use what's called a natural symbol. And this tells you to play the natural note instead. So you go back to playing a white note. So for example, if you'd seen this note at the beginning of the bar, that's F A C, that's a C sharp. But later in the bar, you saw another C with this natural symbol, then the second C is to be played as C natural, not a C sharp. Now natural symbols also overwrite the key signature. So if the key signature says B flat, but in the third bar you see this B natural, then you should play B natural and the natural symbol stays in effect for the rest of that bar. So any Bs that are played after this B natural should also be played as B naturals. However, in the following bar, everything is reset and the key signature kicks back into action. So any Bs after that will be B flat. 
Now before we go to the bass clef, I've created a fun challenge for you in the form of an app, which is 40 sight reading questions, and I want you to see if you can get every single question correct. And if you just go through this for 5 minutes a day, you will learn the skill fast. So to download this for free, just click on the link below. So now it's time for us to look at the bass clef. If you're a piano player, this is what your left hand plays. Now the bass clef has a different set of notes to the treble clef. The bottom line is G, and this is the second G below middle C. So this is middle C up here, this is the C below, and then if we go down a few more notes, we come to G. Now from G, you could count up and figure out any note in the bass clef. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. But again, we can speed up our sight reading if we use a sentence. In this case, good boys deserve fine apples. This tells you the lines of the bass clef. And it's true. So can you tell me which two notes these are? Well, let's say it out loud. Good boys deserve, so that is D. And then fine apples is A. So this is D and A. Or let's say you saw these two notes. Can you tell me which two notes these are? That's right. Good boys is B. And then deserve fine, that's F. And there's a sharp, so we play F sharp. Now the four spaces of the bass clef are A, C, E, and G. Again, they're going to skip and play every other note. Now you can use a sentence to remember the spaces, which would be all cows eat grass. However, at this point, these sentences can become more of a hassle for you to try and remember. So I actually recommend that you just remember the lines for the bass clef, good boys deserve fine apples, and then from those lines you can count up or down to the surrounding spaces. So to demonstrate, can you tell me which note this is? Well, let's count up the lines. Good boys deserve, that gets us to D, and then we count up one note from D, brings us to E. So we just use the lines to figure out the spaces. Or another example, can you tell me which note this is? Well again, let's count up the lines. Good boys brings us to B, and then count up a note from B, brings us to C, and this has a sharp, so this is C sharp. So that's actually what I would recommend you do for the bass clef. Just remember the lines, and then from there you can figure out any surrounding notes. That way you're not carrying around all of these sentences and you're not going to mix them up. Plus, your end goal is not to rely on these sentences forever. These are just training wheels in the short term, but your end goal is to recognize notes by sight. So I've put together a sight reading challenge as my next video, and I want you to see if you can get 100% of the answers correct. So to take the challenge, just click here.